She said, I want to talk about children playing. In underdeveloped cities, ports, children are everywhere. On the beach, on the street, on waste ground, everywhere. And they are playing. They are playing children's games, inherited from children to children. These games are fairly sophisticated. They learn by themselves. They learn a lot by playing these games. And they are happy. But when you tend to develop cities, children disappeared into schools. And in schools, they are quite boring. They play very little. <laughs> and because of the faculties of education say that you should play as a modern pedagogy, they, they create a game, design games for children. But because they are, these are games for children, they, has, they have to be simple and stupid. <laughs> and therefore, they are boring. <laughs> they are boring. I think she's telling a great truth, <laughs> a great truth. We all thought that schools are for learning. We never knew that there are things that schools are working against learning, are damaging learning. I'm not saying schools are always damaging learning, but we lost a lot because of the schooling system. And uh, this is a relatively good classroom in China because you have somebody come out and role play, and that is supposed to be very good. Otherwise, it's just sitting and listening. Uh, this is even worse in Japan. Even the teachers have to role play to attract attention of the school and uh, the students. <laughs> right? However, in Guangzhou, a southern city in China, I saw this bronze statue. <laughs> this is a, thousand, a, a typical door in southern China to allow wind to blow in, but to cut off the, the, the thieves. But this poor child has got his head cut, uh, caught in the... So I thought it was interesting. So I look at the caption. You know what was said in the caption? Work hard, don't play. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was the kind of uh, uh, thinking in people's mind. It's a dichotomy. If you play, you don't learn. If you learn, you work hard, you don't play. It's still very much. My understanding is that we have taken society as a manpower structure with different classification, with classification of human beings into different uh, jobs, different tasks, and then you divide them into different ranks. Fewer at the top and more at the bottom. But human beings are not one like that. So how do you shape the human beings into such a labor structure? We need something called education. And as a system, education system started, according to the historians of education, started only in the mid 19th century. Before that, there were schools, there were learning institutions, but they are not systems of schools. And how, do, how does education play that role? You need examinations. Right? How, otherwise, how can you classify? How can you screen people out? How can you sift? Therefore, you need syllabuses. Otherwise, things will go astray. And then you have textbooks, you have schools, pack them into the same process, the same requirements, the same expectations, the same processes, classes, timetable, and so on and so forth. To me, it is not very different from a factory. If I, say, if I said this in the 1970s, it would be a very radical theory, right? It's almost, almost cultural revolution. But now I believe that perhaps it is true in the typical timetable, Monday morning, first hour, you have a dose of geography. The second hour, you have a dose of mathematics. It's like a Toyota car, 
So a certain, certain station, you're pumping something, a second station, you're pumping something, almost like this. Why can't we have a whole week of geography? Why can't we have, I did that actually in my own school, the whole day of chemistry, whole day of physics, in the physics lab, it worked miracles. Because you know how each and every child was progressing. Anyway, that's sidestepping. The consequences are human beings are converted to human resources. And still, in large number of countries, almost all countries, when you talk about education, they said this is for human resources. And my mind boggles. These are human beings. As a statesman, as a politician, you can say education is for human resources. But if I were a parent, I would think my child is a human being. And to be more cynical, students are tortured until they confess to the labor market. <laughs> But it's not a joke. If, if we look into university students, I'm not so sure about US, presumably it's almost everywhere. A lot of students don't want to do a job that they're trained for. Mismatch between what they do and what they study is huge. In my own university, even a very professional school of engineering, 35% of the students never did anything in engineering. Imperial College in London, the top engineering school in, in UK, 40, uh, only 41% of the final year students said that they will want to be an engineer. Right? But what's wrong with that? It's not the students are wrong, the systems is wrong. 